Hi, this is Amanda Beck with Beck Bio. This video is on site disturbances and stressors, specifically those that result from invasive and feral wildlife. Site disturbances and stressors are events, conditions, or agents that inflict stress or have negative effects on biological resources such as plants, wildlife, soils, waters, and habitats. This video is on impacts that could potentially result from invasive and feral wildlife. California native wildlife are those animals found within their natural range in California. California non-native wildlife are those animals found outside of their natural range in California and those animals that have been accidentally introduced or intentionally introduced to the state. Some non-native wildlife are considered invasive, which include taxa that once introduced to an environment, they establish, quickly reproduce, and spread, and cause harm to ecosystems, including habitats, soils, waters, and native plants and wildlife. Note, not all non-native introduced species are considered invasive. Some California non-native wildlife are considered feral. Feral is a term used to describe a non-native, unsocialized, untamed, outdoor, domesticated animal that has escaped captivity and has turned wild, or descendants from these animals. Like invasive species, feral animals can cause significant environmental damage to habitats and native wildlife. Invasive and feral wildlife also threatens human and animal health and safety and is a detriment to a state's economy, agricultural industry, recreational industry, and infrastructure. Native plants and native wildlife have no evolutionary history with invasive and feral wildlife. Consequently, native species have no defense mechanism against the invaders, and the invaders have little to no natural predators to keep them in check. The introduction and spread of invasive and feral wildlife can result in permanent impacts on plants, animals, soils, waters, and habitats by potentially reducing native plant and animal population growth, dispersal, recruitment, and survival. Therefore, the ability of the area to support native populations may decrease. Invasive and feral wildlife can displace native wildlife by outcompeting them for resources such as water, food, and space. They are often aggressive and very competitive. For example, American bullfrogs are large, nasty predators that were brought to California for the dish frog legs. Bullfrogs are eating machines and will kill and eat anything they can find. They have a huge reproductive capacity and produce thousands of young. They compete with native wildlife and can completely alter food webs of aquatic ecosystems. Invasive and feral wildlife can harm or kill native plants and wildlife. For example, the red fox is an invasive mammal that was brought to California for fur and hunting. They are an aggressive predator killing all ground dwelling wildlife and will take over areas where there are generally no coyotes. Invasive and feral wildlife can cause harm to the health and safety of native wildlife, people, their pets, and farm animals. For example, Mute swan were imported to California from Eurasia to be displayed at zoos and parks. These large birds consume a large amount of vegetation and their aggressive territorial behaviors impacts the native bird population. They will chase away, attack, and even kill other birds and they have even been known to attack and injure people, their dogs, and children. Invasive wildlife can parasitize native wildlife. For example, the brown-headed cowbird is an invasive bird that is native to the eastern U.S. These birds do not build their own nests and they are considered a brood parasite. Females mate with many males and then they go around laying one to two eggs in the nests of other small birds for them to raise. Sometimes they will remove the eggs of the other birds. The cowbird chick, when it hatches, is aggressive and grows faster than the other chicks. 
The native chicks usually die because the mother keeps feeding the bigger, aggressive cowbird chick, thinking it is her offspring. This causes lower reproductive rates of host birds, which leads to population declines. The brown-headed cowbird has impacted many California special status bird species, such as the southwestern willow flycatcher, the least bells vireo, and the coastal California gnatcatcher. Invasive and feral wildlife can cause harm to agriculture and people's properties. For example, wild pigs are known to raid open space, agricultural fields, farms, rangelands, city parks, and people's gardens. They are large, voracious feeders, and they can cause extensive damage to these environments by rooting up the ground, wallowing, eating large amounts of vegetation and plant parts above and below the ground surface, preying on small wildlife and leaving their droppings. Invasive and feral wildlife can compact and damage soils, which make it difficult for native plants to survive and reproduce, and they can alter hydrology and water quality through erosion, sedimentation, vegetation clearing, and clogging or obstructing water systems and infrastructure. For example, Nutria, which is a large, invasive, semi-aquatic rodent that was brought to California for its fur from South America, can cause serious damage to aquatic systems through their burrowing and non-stop feeding on vegetation above and below the ground surface. The damage caused by their digging and clearing of vegetation can cause soil erosion and create areas of open soils and open water. Nutria can completely alter an aquatic system that they have invaded. Invasive and feral wildlife can help spread invasive vegetation by creating areas of exposed soil and dispersing their seeds through their scat or on their bodies. For example, 14 American bison were brought to Santa Catalina Island in the 1920s for a movie and were left there after filming. A herd is still on the island today. Bison can create large areas of bare soils by wallowing and then spreading invasive plant seeds through their dung. Seeds also can get caught in their shaggy hair and transported when shed. Invasive and feral wildlife can interbreed with native wildlife which can create hybrids and alter gene pools. For example, the California tiger salamander pictured here can interbreed with the invasive barred tiger salamander creating hybrids. Finally, invasive and feral wildlife can transmit diseases to wildlife, plants, and humans. For example, the Japanese white eye is an invasive bird from Asia that is known to carry several avian pathogens and parasites. Invasive and feral wildlife can dramatically change a state's ecological landscape and can account for degraded and low quality habitats, soils, and waters, low species diversity, low species abundance, and local extinctions. Invasive and feral species is one of California's biggest environmental problems. During your field survey, document whether your project site contains invasive or feral wildlife. The next two slides shows photos of fictional project sites. For each site, I will give an example description that would go in your bio report. Note, your description does not have to be exhaustive, it could just be a single sentence. Example 1. During the survey, a herd of feral horses were observed grazing in various locations throughout the project site. In addition, horse manure was found throughout the site and within the dry drainages. Feral horses are known to compact soils, overgraze, crush vegetation, and compete with other wildlife for plants and water resources. Example 2. Approximately 30% of the forest within the project site has experienced severe dieback due to the non-native invasive bark beetle. The dieback has been exasperated by the drought the state is currently experiencing. Example 3. Biologists observed parts of the ground within the project site were disturbed and turned up. This is evidence of wild pigs foraging and rooting for food. Example 4. Biologists observed non-native invasive American bullfrogs within the stream system. This would constitute a significant threat to the existence of California red-legged frogs if they were present. 
Thanks for watching. Please move on to the next video which deals with site disturbances and stressors, specifically those that result from natural and man-made events.